right, moving on. We got Saved by the Bell and The Price is Right. Shoot. Tough one. Tough one. This... Price is Right was the reason you stayed home from school, mm-hmm. uh, or pretty much what you did when you stayed home from school. Still on today, what Drew Carey is doing that show now too, right? Is that true still? Um, yeah. Saved by the Bell, I would say – I'm going to fight your Boy Meets World comment. Saved by the Bell, Zach Morris is probably the least – likable main character i think there's even a youtube uh channel that is all about how terrible it's, zach morris it's through, is um it's through funny or die i think okay um it's called they have they have a series through funny or die called zach morris is trash <laughs> i mean just about every character on there was like a turd that's true. i feel like besides screech like i feel like screech was the only person who was likable like which seemed to Casey reverse Stater the real life was a Kelly Kapowski, that they all, I mean, come on. So, all right, this this isn't a, a character judgment. What, the show itself, Saved by the Bell, Price is Right, what do you think? I there I think there's very iconic, I would keep saying iconic just because, <clears throat> iconic, um, but Save, Saved by the Bell is a great show. Um, I have caught myself every once in a while going back and watching, you know, episodes that i i really liked um kind of getting a chuckle here and there um they had some really pivotal moments um things that they talked about too that were serious you know when jesse had the the pill addiction you know and she was taking speed because she was studying too hard and you know she had to get straight a's or whatever yeah um you know there were things like that that um grabbed people's attention but price is right i mean Again, another show where like, all right, that's on when I'm getting, you know, my oil change, but I'm stuck to the TV when it's on, and I got a headache. I need to stay home. Hell yeah, Price is Right coming on at twelve o'clock. I'm gonna be eating my new chicken noodle soup, drinking my ginger ale, watching Bob Barker with this tiny little microphone, a little head on the top <laughs> of it, uh, and hoping somebody you know hits plinko. So Price is Right. All right, Ryan, what do you say? All right, I'm gonna go with Safe by the Bell on this one. Ooh, um, putting me in a spit. Because you're a jerk. Uh, <laughs> well, it's only because, because the reason I no, I use a treasure. Because you don't want to spay and neuter your cats and dogs. I I I would do it twice if I could. Um, no, uh, I'll be honest, The only reason I'm gonna say Safe by the Bell is because Kelly. The stuff is no. The stuff that you make up about uh, that you make fun of with that show i mean you're talking about like andy you're talking about like well that was a very serious episode like she was addicted to pills i'm like the thing everyone talks about with that episode is making fun of her singing i'm so excited i'm so (laughs) excited i'm so scared like that it's like that's what everyone remembers for that but that's what like i have i probably have had more memories of like interacting with friends like joking about something like that than being like oh my god that gave a plank go like that like <laughs> so it's it saved by the bell is kind of true. like the humor of saved by the bell is kind of like a pun a pun like in the sense that like people will generally across the board find it like groan worthy and like they'll think it's awful but everyone's on the same page with it so it's like I, I can't think of The Price is Right ev- evoking those kind of interactions with people, so that's why I'm giving it to Save by the Bell. All right, all right. Uh, you know, you swayed me, Ryan Hanley. I think I'm going to go with uh, Save by the Bell as well. Um, I, I do love... Uh, For I half love... a second, I thought you were going to say, you swayed me. I'm going to agree with Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you talked me out of it. No, say, say by the Bell, I mean, it, what did they have, two or three movies? They had the College Years Later, which was a horrendous spinoff, but oh, I still God. watched it. Um, uh, Zach Morris, later in life, did a couple shows that I really, really like. Um, uh, say by the Bell. I, it just, it, it's a show that, when I think about it, it brings a smile to my face. So I'm going to go with Say by the Bell as well. So Say by the Bell moves on to the second round. Next one is animated shows here, uh, so I have little to no experience with this. Um, but I'll just tell you my vote right away. Hey Arnold versus South Park. I'm just going to give it to South Park. I, I don't watch the show now. I kind of find the humor to be not my thing. But South Park was funny for the time frame that I watched it. Um, so South Park is mine. Vote over Hey Arnold. I never watched one episode 
of Hey Arnold. Well, that's disappointing. But, I, I mean, I'm wearing my Hey Arnold shirt. Um, people said that I looked like and acted like the grandfather on that show. <laughs> um, I'm like, hey, there, short stuff. Uh, I, I loved it. But when South Park first came out, I would kind of have to like sneak around and try to watch it. And it was just so raw. And the things that they talk about, I don't even know how they get away with the majority of the things that they talk about. Um, and it's still going on today and way more edgier. And um, so as much as I love Hey Arnold, um, I'm going with South Park. All right, so we've got two for South Park. That is moving on. Ryan, anything to add on the South Park Hey Arnold debate? I, I think I I would have been against South Park if it stayed the way it was when it first began. Um, I think they were just going for a lot of the shock value at the beginning. But I mean, this is a show, particularly later on, that they really do have a lot of smart comedy behind all of it all of the vulgarity there is some really smart writing in that show so but if it if it stayed at the level it was and somehow maintained its popularity i i never would have appreciated it all right well moving on uh we have are you afraid of the dark versus family guy i never watched are you afraid of the dark probably because i was afraid of the dark um I, I feel kind of like we're cheating with Family Guy because it came on what ninety nine and then it was like canceled right after. Um, so I feel like that's more of a two thousand show, but just for the mere fact that Family Guy, um, I watched it and it's still a show that I watch today and still laugh hysterically at. Um, I mean, we watched fifteen minutes of random clips the other day of people watching family guy and, la- and laughing at just some of the mm-hmm. jokes that i wouldn't dare repeat um so my my answer is family guy and you're right it did uh, start uh, there were two seasons in 99 um so it did start in 99 the second season september of 99 so uh, we did get a good 20 uh, something episodes in in 99 uh, but you're right it is mainly a 2000 show what do you think ryan are you afraid of the dark, Family Guy? The weird, the weird thing with "Are you afraid of the dark?" is I feel like it sort of evokes that reaction of like, "Oh man, oh yeah, are you afraid of the dark?" But like, then the reaction <laughs> stops there. That's just it. Then the reaction stops stops there, and like, anyone that has gotten nostalgic for "Are you afraid of the dark?" has not then successfully been able to tell me an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? <laughs> like, I remember, like, I think, like, what people probably are nostalgic for, like, it had a really unique atmosphere for a show aimed at kids. Um, it's, like, one of those few things, I mean, like, kind of, like, Goosebumps falls into that same sort of category, where it's it's a it's a sort of genre that isn't always accessible to a young <laughs> audience like uh, you're like not gonna... RJ's just yawning <laughs> <laughs> it had nothing to do with the talk on are you afraid of the dark i'm with him i like are you afraid of the dark it's just no. it's 9 50 at night <laughs> sorry right it's okay we'll edit all of this <laughs> uh, no but again but like so i, I again it's nostalgic but I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it to Family Guy. All right, I'll make it easy. I'll go with Family Guy too. Are you afraid of the dark? I would agree. Uh, immediately, you're like, Are you afraid of the dark? Best show ever. And then all of a sudden, you're like, But when you watch it back, it's really not that good of a show. I did actually watch it back a little bit. All most of the episodes are on YouTube, um, and uh, it's not good. It's not a very good show. It was at the time uh, when I was, you know, ten years old. Um, but it does not last uh, through the years. Family Guy still does, obviously. Um, so we're going to go with Family Guy and move that on. Uh, coming up next is Fresh Prince and Beavis and Butthead. Fresh Prince and Beavis and Butthead. Um, for me, Fresh Prince. All the way. Uh, Beavis and Butthead was cool. Uh, it probably doesn't last through the years. But Fresh Prince, man, when his father returned, best acting scene in TV of all time. 
uh, when when his father left him again, um, when uh, Phil had a heart attack, uh, when Carlton was on drugs, um, uh, took took whatever Will whatever speed shot. maybe. Will got shot. Yeah, ridiculous stuff. He gets stuck in uh, like a hurricane or something, and he's with a girl. Uh, and all of all of her face is fake. She's pulling off her ear, you know, her her eyelashes and her all this deal. You know, it's it's funny. It's serious. It made me cry. It made me laugh. Um, I, so Fresh Prince. I think the most serious moment was Oscar De La Ghetto. Um, I mean that that really touched me. Um, Beavis and Butthead was that was like my childhood, and that's such a weird thing to say, but I remember. My mom had cable in her room. It was the only place in the house that had cable because she was paying for it. And it came on MTV. No, I was just up there kind of flipping the channels. And I saw, I think it was them, and they like accidentally peed on like a whale or something like so stupid and ridiculous. And I was in tears. I'm like a little kid just like laughing hysterically at how dumb and like this is on TV. Like what is this? And I remember I went up to my uncle, and my uncle was like my big brother. And I was like, hey – did you ever see Beavis and Butthead? And he was like, yeah. And he's like, oh my God, such a great show, right? And we just like had that bonding moment of like, we're going to watch this like all the time together. So like it became just something that we would watch and talk about. So, um, and just joke about it. Like they had a cool concept where they would watch music videos. And that's how like I started to learn, you know, more about music and just the different tastes that they had. Um, and like they would sit there and make fun of the videos, and like these were like current songs that were on, um, and things like Georgia Satellites, like this is like these like ridiculous songs and the videos and just moronic things that they were saying. And it's like you'd probably say that with your friends sitting there watching the same videos, but would you put that on a TV show? Um, I think if they put those moments and were able to do that like on their DVDs, I probably have all their DVDs just to watch their dumb comments watching music videos but they can't do it obviously um but fresh prince so many classic moments i rj you, you hit it like on the head like they could be so serious and um so like in the moment like you know you, you you were there with them the acting was phenomenal and but also hysterical um you know watching jazz getting thrown out of the house every single time was just like the Carlton dance mm-hmm. stuff that you, you know you what still is that again can you can you show us I can't <laughs> uh, I can I will not be able to do that any justice uh, but I will say that I have found the gifts online and I show my five-year-old daughter that and she laughs hysterically or like mm-hmm. when he like drags his feet on the ground and is just moving by his arms um just like screaming at the top of his lungs like She's just like in tears laughing, and I was doing the same thing when I was, you know, in, in the 90s. So, Fresh Prince, that, that was really long-winded, but Fresh All right. Prince. So, we do have two for Fresh Prince, so I apologize, but Ryan, what is your vote on Beavis and Butthead versus Fresh Prince? How do you feel? Um, I think, it, I mean, my vote would have been for Fresh Prince anyway. Okay. Um, it's, I mean, nothing for me, nothing is going to top Apache jump on it. Um, <laughs> that's true. nothing that, I mean that that's one of those <clears throat> moments that also still kind of lives on in its own way um the thing with Beavis and Butthead to me though is that I <laughs> Mike Judge is so talented and so funny but I think better judge like, than Judge Judy yeah but she's Judge Judy and executioner you know it's like <laughs> that's a comedy bang bang joke I can't take credit for that so you better edit that out I, um I'll just put a little uh, credit at the bottom. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think like with the case of Beavis and Butthead, it came out at a time where just people, I mean, MTV probably didn't really know what to do with it. And I mean, it, it had a lot of controversy because it was hitting an audience that it really wasn't meant for. Um, which included, it. yeah, but Andy didn't, you know, burn his house down and said, I learned it from watching Beavis and Butthead, unless that was you. I was pretty. I mean, it was pretty close. Okay, but um, I mean, I, I, I mean, in terms of like my judge stuff, I'm probably more of a King of the Hill fan. Um, Which but... got voted out, mind you. That was in the top 64 from my list, and I saw who beat it. I don't remember right now, but I remember looking at it. I was like, King of the Hill deserves to be in here. 
Just it, it was my, Doug. My Doug beat it. Yeah. Well, we're gonna talk about that show in a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah. So, uh, but again, yeah, Fresh Prince. It's uh, it's too memorable, and it it just really holds up well. And I'm glad it's streaming online too. Mm-hmm. And I will say the most important thing for Beavis and Butthead for me is that I learned how to do the butthead face at a very young age, and not many people can mimic it. Can you can you do it? Yes. Hey. <laughs> Uh, what, <laughs> Beavis? Well, you'll be happy to know Beavis and Butthead has been renewed for a revival on Comedy Central uh, mm-hmm. as of July 1st, so they will be making their way back for a two-season uh, revival uh, where they meet the Gen Z youth. So uh, it should uh, be, be, yeah, yeah. Should be, be fun to, to check it out. But uh, we got two more left in this round. Seinfeld versus Doug. Seinfeld. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Doug Doug doesn't deserve to be in here. No, um, Doug deserves Doug's to be in here. a good show, Patty Mayonnaise, and then it took us 20 years to learn, learn what Skeeter means. Um, I don't <laughs> really remember much about Doug. It, like, I watched it. <clears throat> Is it something I'm going to go, oh, I wouldn't need to go out of my way to watch Doug again? Or do I want to go watch a Soup Nazi? Uh, you know, Seinfeld. I mean, there's not, right. I don't think there's a competition here. Ryan? Uh, Doug does deserve to be on this list, but the the problem Doug the, the the badge of shame Doug has is the seasons that ABC produced. Because I don't know if you remember that it, it started as a Nickelodeon show. It was like the first Nicktoon. So same way that Hey we were talking about Hey Dude, how it started started all of those live action shows for uh, Nickelodeon. This was the first categorized Nicktoon. Um, so that paved the way for Rugrats, which we talked about earlier. Uh, but then it, it really was terrible when ABC took it over. They got the rights to it, and they had their one Saturday morning block, and it was part of that. And it was just an awful, awful cartoon because it lost every bit of charm. The only thing that was good about the ABC version was actually a mistake that was made by the local affiliate uh, in Rhode, the, the local Rhode Island ABC affiliate announcing the show because they actually had the, the full title of the show on ABC was Brand Spanking New Doug. And they had the local affiliate introducing the show like during the credits. If you remember, like back in the 90s, they'd be rolling the credits to the show you just watched and you'd hear a voiceover of like some affiliate like talking about the show that's coming up next or something that's later in the week and so the guy is introducing the show and no word of a lie he goes brand new spanking doug next and like that just (laughs) changed the show entirely and that was the one funny thing about it when it was on (laughs) (laughs) i'm gathering your vote is for seinfeld Seinfeld. or yeah okay so i I love to vote for I'm going to vote for Doug, only because it doesn't matter. Um, Seinfeld passes along. I ha- hate Seinfeld. I have never watched a complete episode all the way through because it makes me want to throw up. Um, one side of the fence to the other with Seinfeld. Like, I yeah. think that's pretty common. Seinfeld moves on. Finally, Road Rules versus Third Watch. Okay. Why the uh, hell is Road Rules in here? What the hell? Like, I saw that in there, and... I was like, RJ, come on. Like, what? Road Rules was classic. I mean, the one of the first seasons, they went and learned how to wrestle with the headbangers. I mean, you have to you have to give it credit. It, it was it was one of the first reality shows that we know of as of today. Real World was another one, but it was never my thing. Road Rules, they got to go in an RV, travel across the country, do random things like wrestle with the headbangers. Um, so it was just, it was an awesome that, show for me. Is that your only basis of putting that show in is because the headbangers are on there? No, I just remember the first, uh, watching the first season, it uh, was just a great great season of, of reality we, tv we should have put raw's war for one of the best 90 shows i mean i left off wrestling on purpose because it was right. obvious you know yeah it, it would have it would have made it but what's the other show that was going up against uh third, third watch. watch i didn't watch third watch so unfortunately i have to go to road rules oh gosh all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna skip here r- real quick third watch is the one of the best shows ever created uh it is it, it, it took the er aspect and it, and it made it, it was a show about police, ambulance, and fire all in the same. 
um, and it had a ton of different people on it that ended up going into uh, other shows. Um, people like Bobby Cannavale, uh, Michael Beach, uh, Amy Carlson, Molly Price, Kim Raver, who went on to 24. Um, awesome, awesome show. It, w- it was also on late 90s into the 2000s, so it covered 9-11 live. Um, so they, because they were in New York, all three of the the police, fire, and thing. So you literally got to see. It was one of the first shows that actually made a, a, a show about them being in 9/11. Um, so that was a really awesome, awesome experience um, to see live. Um, so I, I'm gonna go with Third Watch. Great show. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. It's really, really good. Ryan, how about you? So the way you're describing it, it it sounds very reminiscent of what NBC sort of airs today um, because they have one night of programming that they kind of call like their Chicago block also some of it's all the it's all the stuff it's all produced by Dick Wolf but it's it's the same thing it's three separate shows that all sort of live in its own bubble Mm -hmm. except they do cross over with the other like shows that Dick Wolf produces yeah um so I mean it's it's reminiscent of that I never really got into third watch um I never really got into Road Rules either, but I'm only going to give it to Road Rules because one of the only things that I really <laughs> liked when I was watching cause on MTV so was one of the shows that I did appreciate on TV. I did enjoy years ago watching when they did the challenge where they okay. would take a cast from the real world and they would take a cast from Road Rules or they would take like a grouping of people from each show and they would do a sort of Road Rules-esque um, season and so i remember watching that like when that was like the i remember getting into the challenges before i really got into any individual season of either show and there was something about it that i kind of liked um i think back then i was able to appreciate the drama that they were trying to produce with it i don't think i would like it now and i certainly don't really get into any of that kind of stuff now um i i just don't know enough about third watch to really give it a vote well all right road rules moves on you've killed third watch so now to make up for that the two of you need to go and watch a couple episodes of third watch at some point come back to me let me know how I'll, you feel. I'll, I'll watch that right after hamilton <laughs> all right we are now in the second round here uh we are uh more likely you're hearing us in a couple of podcast episodes yet again so uh wherever we are in this podcast episode right now uh, we are now in the second round, um, and we have um, uh, less to go through at this point. But Home Improvement, Everybody Loves Raymond. Hard one. I'm going to go with Home Improvement just because I don't like Everybody Loves Raymond. I wasn't my type of humor. I'll sit through it. It's not terrible, uh, but Home Improvement. Tim Allen. By the way, Ryan Hanley, you were talking about Tim Allen's new show. Last Man Standing uh, is his new show, and I actually find it very, very funny. It's very, very good. It, actually, I would say better than Home Improvement. Um, it did get canceled and moved on uh, again to another network. Right. And they, the only reason I don't watch it anymore is they canceled two or three of the actors who couldn't come back and just replaced them like nothing happened. And they replaced that, them with people oh. that don't look anything like them. They didn't even try. So I didn't get back into the show when it came back. I was very excited that it came back, but I couldn't get into it. They, they pulled the Family play. Matters. They, yeah. they replaced yeah. Gary Coleman with Gary Busey. I mean, it's yeah, it's, really it's very random. It's very random. So um, home improvement for me uh, over Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, I'm going to go with Everybody Loves Raymond. It's, Ooh. again, uh, I, I can, I still go back and watch those those episodes. I, I mean, I also do that with home improvement, but way more with Everybody Loves Raymond. Ryan, you're the you're the tie here, the right. tiebreaker. Well, I just, I want to first say, I, I have, I'm not surprised what you were saying with, last man standing um because i I was aware of that whole trajectory with it it doesn't surprise me that it does well because again i think i think that's the type of show and that's the type of humor that really suits tim allen um and his brand of stand-up comedy i mean uh, you know there's a whole generation of people that also know him as buzz lightyear but at the same time like if you look at the the comedy that is solely coming from him that is the sort of archetype that it falls into. Like that character that he's playing in Last Man Standing, that's his stand-up. Um, I think what we may be talking about here is that this is a successful one-off Republican show. It is. It is. It is not a Democratic show. It is very. It doesn't. It's not. A, I wouldn't call it a pro-Trump show, but it is definitely on the Republican side, conservative values, 
Um, and I don't see a lot of shows like that succeeding like Last Man Standing is. Well, I mean, the little bits of Matt Last Man Standing that I've seen is I think he's willing to... He's probably more willing to take jabs at himself and his sensibilities than people are willing to think because he doesn't always... Tim Allen isn't really great about putting that forward in his public persona. Um, so which so one, it, Ryan? It, it's almost, it almost becomes a matter of what's the better mold? Is it everybody loves Raymond or is it Tim Allen? Because again, I know this is a sort of a random pairing even after going through a second round but these are two comedians that came to a sitcom based on their work as stand-ups. Um, so in, in that sense, I got to give it to Ray Romano. I got to give it to Everybody Loves Raymond. You shocked me on that one. Okay, moving Everybody Loves Raymond. Next up, Whose Line Is It Anyway versus Rugrats? Whose Line? Whose Line? Whose Line? All right, easy enough. Love Rugrats but longevity. Raptor, got him. <laughs> friends, family matters. I'm going friends. with friends. friends. Friends, we got two for friends. Ryan? Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll go with friends. I'm going to go with friends. Family matters was good. It, it, Ryan, you said something earlier about Boy Meets World kind of going over the top. Family Matters did that for me when uh, Urkel was turning into Stefan and there was a time machine, I think, at some point. A little too much for me. Uh, before it got a little ridiculous like that, I did love the show. But Friends Friends kind of stayed the same throughout the 10 years it was on, um, and it worked. Family, Family Matters is also a very, very specific brand of sitcom that sort of lives in its own bubble. Um, and the general outlook of that bubble are is seems to me is that these are really not good shows <laughs> <laughs> but there's something likable about them um i think because i mean a lot of these shows that we've been mentioning or have even been in these brackets the they're really not the best written but i mean you're it's but it's easy to say that when you compare to the quality of tv writing now is also a chance that you could say, you know, but there was a lot of stuff in the 90s that was really, really well written. Just none of them on our list because we none are so people. It's like, you're talking about best 90s TV. It's like... Ryan, I had Freaks and Geeks on here. I mean, there was yeah, only one, that's, one that's season it. and that was... The Wire was 2002. Okay. Right. Uh, my apologies. My apologies. We'll, we'll do 2000s here. next. I, I would like to do in a future episode a uh, full-length drama series over all time. Just like I'm thinking shows like The Sopranos, 24, oh, I didn't watch you know, some of those episodes. longer those longer shows. But uh, next up we have Simpsons and Boy Meets World. Simpsons. Ooh. What? No. Okay, make your case, RJ. <sighs> no, it's too late. Uh, Boy Meets World is, is, is my vote. I am literally watching that now with my kids. We started in season one. We're in season two right now. We're going to move over to Girl Meets World after that, uh, which was not a great show, but super cool to see all the Boy Meets World cast come on to it. Um, but Boy Meets World by far for me uh, over The Simpsons. But it looks like we've got two votes for The Simpsons, so that does kill Boy Meets World in the second round. Uh, Full House and Rescue 911. Here Full, House. Full House. Full House. Yeah, Full House for you. Yeah, Full House. Uh, did you guys see Fuller House? I, I'm, yes. I'm actually a fan of Fuller House. It's not yeah. an, an amazing show, but it follows the same format. So we ha Jamie and I haven't watched all of it yet, um, but we've watched a good chunk of it. Um, I can appreciate that it's able to laugh at itself. Yeah. Because again, yeah. like that's what I was just saying. Like it's Full House is definitely in that specific sitcom bubble. And they are just, they're riding that wave now of, like, we know exactly what this invokes. We know exactly what people feel about this. And we're just going to poke fun at it. We're going to take the tropes that worked and we're going to beat them to death. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun to watch them <laughs> laugh at themselves. Yeah. And I was going to say, much like Beavis and Butthead, I also have a good Mr. Woodchuck impersonation. I think you should do it. See my desk here. You know what it's made of? Not any wood. <laughs> and we lost two viewers. I had a coworker who made me call up one of her friends and do the Mr. Woodchuck voice. <laughs> nice, nice. Were they were, were they breaking up with their significant other and they were? Not any wood. 
No, no, they didn't. I mean, Full House invokes a feeling like Full House still makes me feel good today to the point where I was invested in Aunt Becky's real life college storyline. <laughs> so Full House, yeah, all the way. Uh, we got Saved by the Bell and South Park. I'm going to go say by the bell. I don't like South Park overall, uh, but I understand its importance in, in the world. Uh, but say by the bell just does it for me. It is nineties. Ryan, what I want to hear your thoughts. I'm not going to make this easy for you, Randy, because I'm going to go South Park. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, South Park. It's one in one here. The thing is, I mean, I think you can make a case for South Park being just as iconic in the nineties. I mean, that's true. South Park, I mean, still has its reputation, but the thing is, like, the thing that I think makes it very 90s or the aspect of it that makes it very 90s is there used to be a ton of merchandise of South Park. When that show first came out, even when it was going with, like, very lowbrow humor, I would, you, I would, if you go into, like, a mall, like, you couldn't pass, like, a store like a Spencer's Gifts or a Hot Topic that didn't have, like, South Park shirts. I think, you know, it has just as much of that weight as you're saying with Saved by the Bell in terms of that 90s pop culture. Um, It's just... It's better written for me. I like like the point that you just made, Ryan. But if I think about shows that I, I actually watched, like intently i'm gonna go with saved by the bell Ooh, okay. even though it's weird because i didn't vote for saved by the bell in the first place but i did south park but head to head i'm gonna say by the bell all right saved by the bell moves on we've got family guy versus fresh prince all right oh, fresh prince Fre- yeah i'm going fresh with fresh prince, prince. That's it. That's again easy. i think if you put family guy in the 2000s it's gonna fare better that's yeah, true. Fresh That's true. Prince, I could I could watch all the time. Yeah, but Fresh Prince for me as Fresh well. Prince also fares in the two thousands. That's Fresh true. Prince in is, syndication. I mean, that could I be mean, on now. It was, it was it was easily. There's a reboot. There's a reboot coming on uh, with a serious uh, version of Fresh movies. Prince. Mm-mm. This is gonna be good. Well, yeah, and it's based on the uh, the short that like I think it's like a, maybe a four to six minute short or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Will they, Smith had seen it I, and wants to do it now. I think so. they're, they're moving forward with that that team. Yep. Uh, and the final of round two, Seinfeld versus Road Rules. I'm going to let you guys handle this one because I already know where Seinfeld. you're going. Seinfeld. <laughs> Seinfeld moves on. <laughs> we are in the third round here, almost done. Everybody loves Raymond. Whose line is it anyway? My vote's for whose line is it anyway. Still classic show, and I don't like Everybody Loves Raymond. It's quiet on that side, guys. Well, um, it's, it's a podcast. It's tough. It's a tough one. You don't you, you don't want to be the tiebreaker. I who do you got, Ryan? You got. I mean, I there's a part of me that says if I part of me is saying what if I don't it? say who's lying, I'm I'm being insincere to myself because I mean that for me like you know going into theater and wanting to go into comedy and things like that, um, it's been very very influential. Um, I'm going to go with Raymond, actually. Ooh, okay. Because... He's making you choose, Sandy. All right. Who's line and everybody loves Raymond? Behind me, there are seasons of DVDs, and there's one in there that is between these two, and that's Everybody Loves Raymond. All right. Well, thank you for showing so that's why your outdated I'm picking, DVD I'm collection behind right, you. <laughs> so Everybody Loves Raymond? All right, everybody loves Raymond moves on. Next up is Friends, The Simpsons. It's getting tough. I'm going to go with Friends. Again, I am not an animated series type of guy. Uh, Simpsons was funny, uh, iconic, to steal your word, Andy, but Friends, 10 seasons, loved it from the start to finish. I agree, Friends. Brian Hanley? I apologize. Should I be bleeping out your last name? Um, it says at the bottom of the screen. We've, we've already decided. Uh, we have. We don't need to. I, I can. I, 
I can support the vote for Friends. I don't know okay. if I would have voted for Friends, but I can support it because it is, it, it is very, like I said, it is sort of in a time capsule. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, I can that support, time capsule, baby. Because, I mean, but I, again, we are specifically talking about the 90s. Um, and I know I've been sort of vacillating back and forth on that argument, like supporting in some and not supporting in others. Um, but I mean, I, I get that. I get that appeal with friends. All right, and, moving on. Full House, Saved by the Bell. Full House. Full yeah, house. I'm gonna agree with you on the Full House. Yeah, I'll go with Full House. Oh, that moves it, on. Okay. It's really like, uh, it. I. I it, Part of me thinks like it's the battle of the bottom of the barrel, you know. <laughs> hey, it was the '90s. All right, oh, Fresh okay. Prince, yeah. Seinfeld, Fresh Prince, all the way. Fresh all Prince. Right. Uh, Seinfeld. I I couldn't tell you one thing that happened. I think I think yeah. I don't know anything about it. Fresh Prince, great stuff. There was a scene. I don't know if it ever made the show. I think it was in the credits. Carlton. Uh, something happens and he starts screaming, no, no. And he goes through all and he the gets sets. down on his, his, his hands and knees and just goes through the yeah, whole that's, set. Yeah. That's what I saw on that, that clip. That's what, yeah. Okay. That yeah. was actually, yeah, just no, that actually aired stuff. too. Oh, it yeah. did. Okay. I, I, I thought it aired in like the, the credits like of the one of the, like the ending. Of no, the so I, well, Fresh Prince did a lot of that stuff where they were willing to sort of break the fourth wall, particularly later on. I mean, they consistently did it when they replaced the original actor that played on Biv. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they acknowledged that right away. They they did a lot of that stuff where they were willing to sort of break the fourth wall. But yeah, it was uh, he was playing a trick on Carlton because uh, uh, he was who was his fiance later on in the show. Carlton's? Oh, Will's. Will had Will almost got married. Oof, I don't remember. But like he 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 played this trick because Carlton played a trick on him, and then he he got him back by saying like oh, they tried to do this and then I got so angry and then I don't know what happened I just sort of blacked out and she's still up there man like that just like <laughs> and that's what made Carlton flip out but yeah that that scene sticks with me too um, I think I'm gonna go with with Fresh Prince between the two though I I am too you know Seinfeld was a show about nothing and i felt that at times like they played they played it too much like it literally went nowhere sometimes like it was an entire episode and by the end of it you're kind of like okay uh where fresh prince they could take you through a wide range of emotions uh, and they they did it all very well so i'm going with fresh prince Se seinfeld also has this sort of there's there's this thing about not necessarily the show, but about Jerry Seinfeld himself, where he's sort of considered like he's not really human in his own way. He's really he's not. very he can be very funny, but he's sort of like he's very unrelatable in a in a specific way, and it it kind of drags down the show a little bit when you put the two together. Mm -hmm. I can relate to George. We are in the semifinals. Uh, only four shows remain. Everybody loves Raymond versus Friends. Friends. Friends as well Friends. for me. Well, we knew that was gonna happen. So. We're, we're opening up that time capsule, Ryan, and in there we see a holiday armadillo. Oh my word! <laughs> the uh, second pair of shows, Full House, Fresh Prince. Ryan, let's start oh, you first. Fresh Prince, for sure. I'm gonna go with Fresh Prince as well. Well, it's a good thing I don't have to answer because I'd also go at Fresh Prince. All right. We are now in the finals of our top 90 shows. This is podcast episode number 403. <laughs> at least these are two and shows. And it's all the 90 working. shows. <laughs> I, I, am, I, am, I know there's a lot of stuff out there that a lot of people are like, no, this is better. But um, th at least these two shows are worthy contenders for the top. Yeah, five. yeah. Friends, Fresh Prince um a lot to to figure out here anybody have any guesses immediately what i know my pick i definitely know my pick between what, the two what's your pick yeah it's fresh prince fresh prince all right fresh prince is my pick between the two for sure andy i feel kind of jaded uh, or <laughs> listen my wife is a friends fanatic and you know that 
you know, we've had a few people who are like, I'm a Friends fanatic, and then they go up against her, and they're like, I'm not a Friends fanatic, because my wife, I've seen her just, like, humiliate people. Um, and she's the type of person, like, there'll be a fact that's thrown out, she's like, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, and then she'll feel really bad about herself and, like, eat a tub of ice cream. Um, no, I'm just joking. Um, she didn't get this far in the podcast, don't worry about it. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think either of our wives will. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe this is the only but, part they listen to. <laughs> yeah. and, but Friends, God, I mean, it, it's good. It's got it's got those 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 moments, and I think I'd rather watch Fresh Prince. I don't. It's something about Will Smith, Carlton, just all the characters just have. Oh my, Jeff Jeffrey, like that dude alone could have been his own sitcom. I just had like, you know. Um, yeah, I'm going with Fresh Prince. So well, you've matter. made my vote anticlimactic, but uh, I'm going to go with Fresh Prince as well. <laughs> um, the, the reason I say Fresh Prince over Friends is one thing and one thing only. I love sitcoms that can get serious. Friends, to me, never had a moment that was that serious. Uh, Fresh Prince, many, many ones. Yeah. Uh, nothing that I really... What, what happened in Friends? Um, when what's your face? Got Will they? Won't they get together? The, the stingray, pee, uh, and they had the piano. <laughs> they made every serious moment comedic, and that's okay. That was their thing. But Fresh Prince could get super it's... serious, could get super funny. They had a lot of range when it came to that. And it's uh, got to be tough for you because you were on the show for so long playing Ross. Um, <laughs> so you probably don't want to see it anymore. Yeah, you know it's you it's... are Ross. You you are. There's an episode where. Rachel starts dating a guy named Russ, <laughs> Russell, and it's like I'm I'm watching you on on the big screen. Um, you yeah, make the same faces. So we've done it. We've done it. The top 90 shows. We've gone through a lot. We ended with the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I don't think there's going to be many people that will argue that it's not one of the top shows of the 90s, whether it's the first one or not. I'm not sure, but definitely a top. 90 show uh and then we got the reboot coming out they just got signed on for two seasons of bel air um where they're going off of a serious reboot um a, a darker i actually did hear yeah. um that was gonna be pretty good uh, yeah there is a trailer out there right now from yeah. cooper uh if you check it out but um guys what do you think are there any shows that were not included that you're now thinking of like oh man why wasn't this included in our top shows i think i think a lot of people are gonna be mad that buffy wasn't on here um it's probably true i i never watched that show i man my wife watches it i just i can't i can't like it's background noise Mm -hmm. when she's trying to fall asleep and i i groan like i just hear the stuff that i was like you like this like and she because she makes fun of wrestling and i'm like really like this is acting i I that tried to get into that show when it was on. Um, I I got to a point where I just felt like, for me, like all of the characters were just not very likable. Um, I don't know what it like was. Um, I, I I couldn't get to. Oddly though, I actually for a while I was into the spinoff because um, that Angel? David yeah the Angel spinoff with David Boreanaz because I I am a sucker for the like the the Broad detective Travis. private uh the private investigator sort of backdrop um i i love that kind of stuff um if we were talking about like 80s television there's like a whole sort of no ryan of... stick to the 90s i'm saying if we ever were there's a whole that's a of whole shows that don't don't give it away we might do 80s into... okay <laughs> Jeez. Well, you know, Fresh Prince is just going to win that bracket too. So. <laughs> what about, so, what about yeah, you, RJ? Just to wrap it up here, I think so. My wife actually got me into a show that I never wanted to see, um, and we're only six episodes in, but I, I am finding it to be very funny. Was Wings? Um, it started in 1990, uh, took place right in Massachusetts in Cape Cod area. Um, the only reason I got into it for the first episode was because Tim Daly's in it, who is also in Madam Secretary as the, the husband, uh, and in a bunch of other things too, but, um, I found it, it, Thomas Hayden Church is in it as well. Um, and I'm, I'm finding it to be very funny. Um, I'm only six episodes in two shows that we did not include, um, but I do love, um, but just didn't make my list. Uh, Frasier, surprisingly, uh, we did not put on this list. 
Um, and then the other one was mainly an 80s show, but it was until 93 was Cheers. Um, but I kind of counted that as an 80s show just because I think seven years it was it was or eight years it was in the 80s. So um, but Cheers and Frasier were both ones that, that did not make the cut either. Um, anyways, we are uh, way over time at this point, but we did our top 90 shows. Uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air has won that. If you don't agree, or you do agree, um, or you just want to talk about how um, you know you thought a different show uh, is amazing, hit us up at Facebook.com/slash You Dad Me at Hello. That's D A D You Dad Me at Hello. Um, if you don't get that, you're not old enough. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, feel free to check it out. We're also on YouTube, uh, Spotify, anywhere you can get your podcasts. Um, Ryan Hanley, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm sure we will see you again. We're going to be doing uh, wrestling related podcasts as we go along as well, where we go through our favorite matches or favorite wrestlers um, or favorite moments throughout wrestling. This is a wrestling slash entertainment podcast. So we'll do music, movies, film, uh, TV, uh, wrestling, all of the above. So uh, thank you for Very taking awesome. time out of your night um, uh, next to the airport and uh, <laughs> giving us your opinion on uh, on all things 90s shows. Thank no, you. he's over the highway and bypass. There's <laughs> actually a toll booth. That window next to him is where he collects some money. Man's got uh, living. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thank you guys again for joining us. Feel free to hit us up. Uh, hit that subscribe button, that like button, whatever we have currently. And uh, we'll see you later.